The Art of Being Ruled. Wyndham Lewis. Original Publication 1926. 1989 Edition. Narrated by Skeptical Waves. Part 3. The Small Man. Chapter 1. The Two Great Rival Political Principles Today, Liberalist Democracy and Authority. A worldwide accommodation of ideas is going forward in which the European system is only one factor no longer possessing an ascendancy. Behind the scenes a novel adjustment of the world consciousness is in preparation. The democratic European idea is one that is undoubtedly being strangled off the stage. One day a messenger may appear and announce in solemn tones its pathos. By their superficial idea of freedom, by their insistence on the individual, any individual, that is, every northern or white community, from the Greeks to the present Europeans, have made it impossible for the white race to combine and consolidate itself. Each individual, when he got the chance, became a little universe to himself of exclusive personal life. The spectacular, in fact rather flashy, strength, but also the deep weakness of the white man has been his independence. Even his physical prowess is a weakness. His exclusive reliance on the physical has been made nonsense of by a physical thing, his greatest asset, namely, science. The white man has not in his imagination been able to look all round the world and see it as one large mud ball with certain possibilities. Its possibilities of unification have escaped him, in spite of all his mechanical opportunities for becoming himself a unifier. He has only been able to propel his body laboriously round it, not his mind. So he made a better globetrotter and buccaneer than an organizer, or civilizer. Again, as good brains have been born in the West as in the East, no doubt, but they have been less used and exploited by the over-materialized Western rulers. Matthew Arnold's barbarian oligarchs, for instance, the English aristocracy, with their fine fresh appearance and fondness for outdoor sports, but who for thinking and reading have no great turn, were hardly the people to rule the world. So it is always important to remember what is currently meant in the West by freedom or independence. The Western democratic principle has always been too anarchic to be sensible. It sees things in pieces. It even sees life in pieces, its personality is unstable and easy to isolate. Such are some of the capital causes for the rapid eclipse of European power. Its character of independence, its pretended franchises, its nationalisms, make it unable to organize itself as one white race, and politically, organization is everything, talent, martial qualities, nothing. The parliamentary system is the great characteristic European institution that today has on all hands lost its meaning. There are no doubt worse things for the people than parliaments. But the humbug involved in such a transparently one-sided assembly makes it impossible to go on with it once a certain point of enlightenment or exasperation has been reached. All the liberal tricks are seen through and known now by heart. So, for better or for worse, parliamentary rule is finished. The liberal hero of the farce staged in the English parliament, and the Tory villain, can no longer draw the electorate. The day of that pantomime is past. But the liberal hero has pre-sun party, he was not the great professional, that he always has been, for nothing. So he transformed himself into a reformist socialist or Fabian or social democrat, and there he is in the person for instance of Mr. Ramsay MacDonald, still going strong, still with the noble bearing and rather long hair of his old liberal days. But slowly he is becoming the villain of the peace. It is very complex and we need not go into it very much, but the communist left wing has stolen his thunders. His reform, beside communist reform, appears very insipid. His high respectability and professional scruples would not allow him to compete with this ultra-radical, desperate, ungentlemanly interloper. So he is gradually being forced into the relay of the Tory, the villain of the political peace. The competition in the matter of liberal or radical principles having become so hot, and all the personnel having moved bodily into the left, the sham fight meantime having become a real one, all political struggle is well over the Dexter line of social revolution, everyone today is somewhere on the left, all except fascism, which is a faction of the extreme and militant left who have burst round and through to the right, as it were, circumnavigated, box the compass. But from whichever side he is attacked and whether geographically he is on the left or the right of his immediate opponent, the liberal, in whatever disguise, henceforth will remain the villain of the peace. He will always popularly be in the wrong. The principal conflict today, then, is between the democratic and liberal principle on the one side, of which Kautsky is a typical continental exponent, and on the other the principle of dictatorship of which Lenin was the protagonist and first great theorist, proving triumphantly in action what he had arrived at speculatively beforehand. He discarded all the confusions that the legacy of a century of liberal thought involved, and all the concepts of democracy and mass control were rooted out of his system. Thus purged, it presents itself as something highly abstract and elemental. 
an extreme version of Leninist politics, although, making its entrance from the opposite end, it is still weighted with a great many impure elements of an opposite order to those impairing Sovietism, is Fathismo. Or, if you like, it is Leninism adapted to an ancient and intelligent population. Very roughly it can be said that in a country where the chief resistance to be overcome is in the aristocratic class, the revolutionary dictatorship must appear dressed as a mujik. In a democratic country like Italy or France, it would probably affect its purpose best in a nationalist and slightly aristocratic uniform. But there can be no arbitrary rules, only regional and racial expediency can count in the particular color given to these adjustments. They must all ultimately reach the same objective. Under the heading Kautsky vs. Lenin, in Lansbury's Labour Weekly, April 25, 1925, the general socialist opinion of Kautsky, and with him is associated Ramsay MacDonald as the chief representative of democratic opinion in England, is clearly expressed. It is very exactly the position of Sorel as regards such people as Kautsky, or would be the attitude that Lenin would have advocated. This book is his, Kautsky's, admission that his Marxism has been vulgarized into a creed of petty bourgeois opportunism and liberal go slow. But what is important for us at the moment is that Kautsky is not an isolated phenomenon, and Kautskyanism not a purely German creed. The doctrine preached in this book is but typical of the whole outlook and historical riddle of the Second International. In this country we have McDonaldism, flesh of the flesh and blood of the blood of Kautskyanism, and today many of our best workers in the labor movement are still tied by bonds of tradition and personal loyalties to those who preach this very creed. Those, then, are the opposing principles in the non-revolutionized countries today. All other issues are negligible. The facades of the old party system still left standing you can walk behind and find nothing there but a few underpaid officials holding them up, on the one side is the principle of democracy, parliamentarianism, or liberal go slow, as it is called above. On the other is the policy of dictatorship, or Leninism. The first of these two policies is pacific and non-catastrophic. The second, Leninism, is orthodoxly Marxian in that it is catastrophic.